we have to make sure that we are on top of our, our own mental and emotional stability before we go and expect someone else to care for us the way we think that we should be cared for, if we even know what that is. Peace is your coach, Coach Nyla, one of the founders of Austin and Personal Relationships, as well as co-author of the book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Um, have there ever been a time where you, as a woman, I'm talking to the women out there that's watching this, um, have felt that your husbands don't care, um, that they don't understand what you're going through, that um, what used to be sweet nothings turned into careless whispers? <laughs> Um, to the point where it's like, okay, what am I doing? What are we doing? Um, what has happened? Okay, well, I know I'm not the only one that this has happened to um, because that's just with people, period, whether it's with our husbands, whether it's with our parents, whether it's with our children, all that other stuff where we can have the feelings that we, that the person is not caring for us the way we want them to, because that's pretty much what it is. And um, just being able to teach on that and train on that is very important because we do not want to put a person in a category of saying that they don't care about us when they could possibly care. And if we marry them um, as you know spouses, we know that we married a person that cared. I'm pretty sure that we are not going around looking and saying, yeah, I'm going to marry this person and I know he doesn't care. Or I'm going to marry a person that's not going to care about me. I'm pretty sure that's not what we are looking for in a spouse. So when it ever um, comes to a point in your life, in your relationship, in your marriage, where you're feeling like that you are not, your words aren't being heard, your feelings aren't being validated or being um, protected or have, or you're having some issues with really getting your feelings out for your spouse to understand, let me give you a few tips because if we are really trying to get them to hear our point, understand how we're feeling, see what we are seeing, it's not going to be that way. People don't see eye to eye on a number of things. And what I mean, see eye to eye, meaning that they don't see the same thing. All right. We may feel a certain way as women that men won't understand. We may feel a certain way as women about a certain thing that men may not it may not even bother them either way, shape, or form. I remember Coach Nadir um, stating one time that um, he looks at things in a different view where it's almost kind of like motivation, more, mortality motivation, that's the word I'm looking for, or you know, where you look at it in a point where if this person was to get into a car accident, if this person was to be hurt, if this person was to die, would this thing that we are arguing about or we are talking about or we are having a disagreement on be that big of a deal. I have an important announcement to make, an exciting announcement to make. It's been my goal for 2022 to be able to serve more people because my one-on-one -on -one coaching is full. So now I'm able to open up my group coaching so you can be a better you in 2022. I'm so excited about it. And the wait list has been growing day by day by day. So make sure you sign up for the wait list. You want to be a part of this? Sign up for the wait list. Check it out, coachnyla.com. I'll see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Will we be fussing at them on their deathbed or our deathbed or anything like that? I get that. I get that from that standpoint. This is why I say being able to understand personality types, being able to understand, you know, how another person views the world or views certain things is very important because it helps us to understand them. 
so we can get them to understand us. They're not going to always see it the way we see it. That does not invalidate your feelings. However, I do agree, which I've been told time and time again, I'm a filler. I am an INFJ. It is what it is. I'm a super duper empath. And yes, there are many times I choose to feel the way that I feel. I guess all the time we can choose to feel the way we feel because the feelings are the meanings that we put on our emotions. So we can have an emotion of sadness, of, you know, um, anger, fears, like a, a bunch of different plethora of emotions that we can have. However, the meaning that we put behind them is what drives our feelings, if that makes any sense. Because here's the deal. I can feel a certain way. Um, I can feel lost, left out, uncared for, or anything like that. And those would be the thoughts and the meanings that I'm putting behind the emotions that I'm having at a particular time. And during these times, this is when we must ask ourselves these questions. Is what I'm feeling true? Can we look at points in our lives, points in our relationships to say that this person has demonstrated this, that, and the other that show that they didn't care? Or did they d demonstrate these things that did this, that, and the other that demonstrate this, that, and the other to show that they did care? Now, as I stated before earlier, did we get into a relationship with a person that was careless, that did not care about our feelings? If that is the case, then that is also something we need to take responsibility for. You know, we have to take responsibility for our lives, our relationships, our actions, our responses. So if we are feeling that our husband is not caring, that he's not caring about what we are saying, that he's not caring about our feelings, this is a time where we must step back and say, you know what? Am I feeling, is what I'm feeling true? And we could also look into ourselves and say, you know what, what meaning am I putting behind these things? And we have to realize that we should care for ourselves better than we expect anybody else to care for, for us, for our feelings, our emotions, our actions, our us, whatever, our existence, period. We need to care for ourselves more. We have to really stop putting the responsibility of us loving ourselves, us caring for ourselves, us feeling like a validated individual, an important individual, and an, ama an amazing individual on other people because they're not going to see us the way we do. And yes, we can be our worst critic. We can be our um, hardest teacher, coach, whatever the case may be. Because a lot of times the things that we say to ourselves, the meaning that we put behind things, the things that we say to ourselves, we would not dare let someone else do that to us. So when I'm going through, and I'm not going to pretend like I went through these things in the past and they're not going to happen again. When I go through points in my life, where I'm feeling down, I'm feeling like an outsider, um, I'm feeling like I'm not cared for, I'm feeling these type of ways, I step back, or I'm learn, I've learned, and still learning, because sometimes we forget, we'll be so caught up in our emotion, so caught up in our feeling that we'll forget, and we'll generalize, distort, and delete, and I'll sit there and say, okay, is this true? Am I feeling some way about myself right now and I'm projecting it on someone else? You know, am I feeling kind of low? Is there some things in my past that I have not gone through, like grew through? Is there some things in my past that I have not sat down and confronted and got it done and over with that I'm allowing it to plague my energy, plague my psyche? And now I'm putting it out there and I just let it blow up. Am I doing these things? We have to ask ourselves the important questions. We have to make sure that we are on top of our, our own mental 
and emotional stability before we go and expect someone else to care for us the way we think that we should be cared for, if we even know what that is. Because sometimes what we may say one minute will change the next. And then so it's like, okay, what is it? You know, do you know how you want to be cared for? Sometimes we don't know that. So we need to go and inspect ourselves, inspect our emotions, inspect like our things that could be plaguing us in our lives and have a time out. <laughs> Take a time out and reflect. Not only reflect on what could have caused us to feel this certain way, what meaning we put behind these things to allow us to feel this way, but also reflect on the amazing things about us and reflect on how great we are because the more energy we put to whatever it is we put it to, that's what's going to be big in our minds. That's what's going to be big in our lives. If we put energy to negative and a lot of energy to negative, we're going to get a lot of negative. If we put energy towards the positive, we're going to get a lot of positive. Life is full of ups and downs. Relationships are full of ups and downs. However, being able to be transparent enough to speak your piece, but don't expect someone to see it exactly how you see it. And also when they don't see it the way you see it, be careful with putting a label on that person because they may not have given you the response that you wanted to have. That's a reminder for myself as well as a lesson to you. Hope this gave you guys some good insight, um, some, you know, just some good information on when it comes to thinking that people don't care about you. Um, when it all comes down to it, if we married someone, I'm pretty sure we didn't marry a person that was careless, meaning not just that you know, they don't think before they do things, but that they just don't care about you. I'm pretty sure that that's not the case. If there are times in your life where you feel like maybe you've fallen into a rut or anything like that, make sure that, you know, you speak about it, communicate about it, and try to figure out ways that can pull you out of that rut. You know, maybe sometimes we tend to get too familiar, meaning that we're not spicing things up. We're not um, asking each other the questions that we want to know about each other. We're not finding out more about each other. We're not finding out about the other's growth and changes and different things in life because things change. Sometimes we get so familiar that we say, well, this person should know how I feel. This person should know what I like. This person should know this and that and the other. I'm still, after almost 12 years, still learning Coach Not Beer. And I know he's still learning me because we're changing and we're growing and we're evolving. It reminds me of what um, Deval Ellis is one of the a family, the Ellis's that I kind of watch, I mean, that I watch on YouTube um, from time to time, kind of follow them because they're really cool, funny, and just remind me of my family. <laughs> but um, he stated that, I think he and his wife have been married for 10 years and he said, on their anniversary that he is learning more about this person. He said, this is a new journey. Every day is something new. She's always a new person. Every day she's a new person, meaning that she's growing every day, even if it's a little day by day, it's a different person. This is not the same person you were with yesterday. So we gotta be careful with putting labels on people and expecting them to be in a spot that we seen them at in another point in time. And we need to be more graceful with ourselves and enjoy the beauty that we are putting out in the world and be intentional with putting that beauty out in the world. And the more we give, the more we're going to get. So the more positive you give, the more positive you're going to get. And the more negative you give, hey, that's how it goes. So until next time, make sure that you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether it's there, there, wherever you see it um, on this page. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Once again, Coach Nyla, I'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.
Here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias at Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and Facebook and on IG at Outstanding Relationships and also Clubhouse under our names. And make sure you go to OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com and sign up for our email list. And there you will get updates on our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Absolutely. And last but not least, when it comes to coaching or counseling, if you want to work with us one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, make sure you're on that website and reach out to us because we do have very limited spots and we like usually have a wait list. So with that being said, GLC. Make sure you are growing intentionally. Loving fearlessly. And connecting on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. Stone Lake. Peace. Peace.